So this is change of state and the particle model. Now remember the particle model is a really successful model which explains the properties of solids, liquids and gases by modeling them as groups of particles which have certain amounts of kinetic energy and certain amounts of intermolecular attractive forces. So every particle is attracted to every other particle and they have a certain amount of kinetic energy due to their motion. We call this the particle model, but we also sometimes call it kinetic theory for that reason. You'll be reasonably familiar with these first bits. So here's a solid, here's a liquid, and here's a gas. And you should be able to draw those particle pictures just like that. What kinetic theory would state is that that ranges from most force over there on the solid to least force between the particles over there with the gas. And the most energy over there with the gas and the least energy over here with the solids. And simply put, that's all the particle theory is. That's all the kinetic theory is, is one state has a lot of force and not so much energy, and another state has quite a lot of energy and not so much force between the particles. Now we have to talk about the change of state between solid and liquid. And yes, we can call it melting from solid to liquid or freezing from a liquid to a solid. But actually we're gonna to refer to both of those as fusion. It's more useful often to talk about just between solid and liquid being fusion. Doesn't matter which direction we're going. And similarly with gas, from a liquid to a gas, that's evaporation. From a gas to a liquid, that's condensation. We're just gonna call both of those vaporization. The change in either direction is vaporization. One really common discussion about solids, liquids, and gases will be their density. Now it does tend to be that the solid is more dense than the liquid and the liquid more dense than the gas, but beware of that. The free states of matter and the densities can be explained using the particle model. And the densities can change as a result of a change of state. Now you will need to remember and use this equation here, which is rho is m over v. So density is mass divided by volume. And we can use kilograms per meter cubed, or we can use grams per centimeter cubed, but we don't mix and match those two things. So just remember, you need to be able to draw these accurately. And whilst it's true that for most materials, the solid is more dense than the liquid, that isn't true for every single material. For example, ice would float on water, meaning ice is actually less dense than the liquid form water. So just be careful not to space out your liquid particles too much. Essentially, liquids, the difference is more that they are just touching and being able to change places rather than being spaced out largely. There is a large change in density from a liquid to a gas, though. So the most dense would be the solid, the least dense would be the gas. And remember, if you're ever asked to describe the arrangement of the particles in solid, liquid and gases, to use these terms. So in a solid, the particles are moving, they're vibrating, but they're in fixed positions. In a liquid, the particles are moving with more energy and now they can change places. And in a gas, there are large gaps between the particles. That's the arrangement and they are randomly moving at high speeds in all directions. That's their motion. So we use these particle pictures to sum up the arrangement of the particles and their motion. <laughs>